We've already been introduced to what AWS Bedrock is, created our free AWS account, and our IAM user. Then we created a Lambda function and all the code that we need to actually generate uh, something from an AI model. Today, we'll be wrapping everything up by creating the S3 bucket, creating an HTTP request through the API Gateway service, and testing everything through Postman. And we'll go through our CloudWatch logs in case we run into any errors. The links for the first two parts are in the description below. If you haven't watched them yet and you want to follow along, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so as I mentioned, we need to create our S3 bucket to actually save the generated code. Now, what is S3? Well, it stands for Simple Storage Service, and it's just a cloud object service that lets users store and retrieve data. It's really not that complicated. It's a simple service. So if you come up to the search bar and just type in S3, you'll see it here. Just go ahead and click on this. And whenever you get here, you know, you may not have any buckets created, especially if this is your first time, but there's a create bucket on the right here. And all a bucket is, is just a container to store data. And you can have multiple buckets, right? You don't have to have just one bucket for everything. So we're going to go ahead and create this. So go ahead and go to create buckets. Okay, so once you're here, there's just a couple of things we need to do. So for the bucket name, you can go ahead and paste in the actual name of the bucket we used in the code. And we may need to change that if this bucket name is already taken because the bucket name must be unique within the global namespace. All right, so we'll, we'll check this in a minute. For the object ownership, you can just keep this uh, disabled. We don't want to worry about that. You do want to uh, block all public access to the S3 bucket. We don't need to worry about uh, versioning, tags. The default encryption is fine. And then once you're done, just click Create Bucket. However, as you can see here, the bucket with this same name already exists. Just because you don't have a bucket with the same name doesn't mean it's not within the global namespace, okay? And what this really means is that the bucket names must be unique across all AWS accounts and regions, okay? So that's what it means by the global namespace. So we need to come up with something more unique than this. So I'm just going to say dash Tyler YT for YouTube, okay? And then I'm going to see if this works. So I'm going to create bucket. Okay, cool. That one works. So it means this also means that back in our Lambda function, we need to uh, rename the bucket. So we're going to, I can actually just copy paste this. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Lambda console and another tab. Uh, this is the one we just created. So we'll go back into our code and down here where the, we have the name of the S3 bucket, we, I can just copy this in now and then re-click deploy so it saves. Okay, awesome. Now we go back to our S3 bucket. Okay, and then you can see here that our bucket has been created. And that's all we're going to do uh, with this for now. If it comes down to when we run this, that there is some maybe permission policy that needs to be added, we'll go ahead and do, it then, do that then. But for now, we are done with the S3 bucket. By the way, if you like all the code that I used and all the information about the services that we are using, click the link below, sign up for my free newsletter, and you'll get a free PDF about all the information needed for this Bedrock course. Okay, so we're almost there, except whenever we go to test this, we need a way to actually execute our Lambda function uh, from outside of actually being within the Lambda function service. And how we can do that is with the API gateway service. So if you come up to the search bar, type in API, start, uh, you know, it's one of the first ones. So we're going to open this in a new tab. And what this is going to allow us to do is to connect to a backend system with an API. Let's just go ahead and start creating this. And this will make more sense when we go to test this. But we're going to go ahead to the top right, click Create API. And there's a list of API types here that you can use. But the one we're going to be using is the HTTP API. And it also tells you here what it works with. And actually, all of these work with Lambda. So we're going to go to Build. And then we need to add an integration here. So we're going to add integration. I want to type in or choose Lambda. And then for the Lambda function, you can choose which one you want this to be tied to. So the one we created, you may only have one on the list, but I have two. So the one I created is the Bedrock code generation. The version, you can keep. That's fine. And then the HTTP API must have a name. So we just call this Code Gen. Okay, and then we can click Next. Okay, and then on the next step, this is optional, right? We don't have to do this now. We can do this later. We could go ahead and just review and create this and then do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do this now and now explain what this does. So the API, API Gateway uses routes to expose the integrations of your API. So what we can do is we can create a get 
post, uh, put, um, patch. We can create all kinds of HTTP requests with this API gateway service. Well, in order to call our Lambda function, we need to give it a couple parameters, like what the language, the uh, programming language type we want, and the message, which is what we want to actually generate for us. So that means that this method, the first one, really the only one that we're going to have right now, is going to be a post method. And because it, it already has the resource path, resource path and that integration target, so we are fine with that now. That's all we need for right now. So we're going to click Next. And now for the next step, this is where we define our stages. Stages are independently configurable environments that you can deploy your API to. You must, now what the important thing is, you must deploy to a stage for the API to take effect, all right? And what this is good for is if you want different environments to test this in, then we, what we can do is we can add a stage for development, just call it just uh, dev, and we don't want this to auto deploy, right? We could also at another stage for production. So once it's tested in dev, you could have it more in between this, but then we can then deploy it to production. Okay, and it's good practice to do this, but we don't need the production right now. Uh, you will always have this, which means it will always auto deploy to the default stage, but I wanna add a dev stage for this. So I'm gonna click next. And now this is just a review and create. So with the API name, uh, the integration, which is the Lambda function integration, we have a post call and then the, the stages. And then we're gonna click create. Okay, and then it reroutes us back to this screen, which is where we have all of the routes or the types of requests for our Lambda function. So right now we only have a post request. And this is all we really need to do right now. Now, the next thing we need to do though is actually deploy this so we can use these routes. So we're gonna click deploy. The stage we want is dev, and then just click deploy. And now what this, what this has done is if we go back to APIs, then go to CodeGen, this is the one that we just created. And then you click right up here on the left-hand screen, there's the API for CodeGen. We now have the stages for CodeGen. We have two different API calls. So this is what we're going to, this is the URL that we're gonna use that is going to execute our Lambda function. Okay, great, now that we have our S3 bucket and our API gateway service set up, we can now get Postman test a service so that it will call a Lambda function and then try to save it to the S3 bucket. And whether it works or not, we'll then check our CloudWatch logs. Okay, now we need a way to test this. So we're gonna use Postman, okay? And this is free. You can uh, either use the web version or you can download the software and use that. But I'm just gonna use the web version so you don't have to worry about downloading anything. And this is what this is gonna allow us to do is to actually call our post request that we just created. Now you could also use a curl command in your terminal but I'm just gonna show you Postman because I like the interface and it makes it a little bit easier. So you'll go to postman.com and you can either sign up for free if you haven't already or just go ahead and sign in. Okay, so if this is your first time here, um, this can look a little daunting, but on the left-hand side, there is a workspaces. So just choose that and go ahead and create a new workspace. So we're gonna create a blank workspace, choose next, and then you can just name it, um, I'm gonna say AWS services, even though it's kind of redundant to say, but just already have an AWS one. So click create. So on the left-hand side here, there's a create collection, click that. And what it says here is we need to add a request. So you can actually name this first, name this uh, collection, right? So this is gonna be called Bedrock. And then we want to add a request. So we're gonna add a request and this will be, we can, uh, so up here where it says new request, you can just name this and this will be a uh, code gen. All right, it doesn't actually, this is just the name of it, right? Now, uh, right here, we know this is a post request. So change that, uh, click the drop down, change it from get to post. And what we need to do is now enter the URL that we're gonna use. So if we go back to our API gateway, uh, here for the dev, just copy this URL, go back, paste that in here, now this is kind of the base URL for the dev, for the dev version. We're gonna need slash, and then we need to um, get the actual uh, API call name, right? So if we come back to our API gateway service, you go to routes, uh, the call name. So it says post request here. So it's a post and then slash bedrock underscore code underscore generation. So we can, I can copy the name of that. Go back here and then make sure you have that slash after the dev and then put bedrock code generation. 
Okay, now we're not quite done yet. We need to give it two parameters. So uh, underneath that URL, there's a params, authorization, headers, and body. Go to body, then choose raw. And it's all, and if it's not already, uh, choose JSON in the drop down here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add in this JSON. We're going to have a message in the language. So message. So we can say um, for the first time, write a uh, write a function that re reverses a string. And then you need to have a comma because it's in JSON format. And then we have the language. And then this is just going to be uh, Python. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and test this. And th I don't expect it to work the first time. And we'll go through uh, the errors um, if it doesn't work. So what we're going to do now is just all you do is click the send button here. So we're going to click this and it's sending request. And it says code was not successfully generated the 404. So we know this was an error. Now this is where I'm going to show you um, what, what the CloudWatch logs are and how they're useful. So we want to go back to our Lambda function. Okay, so this is, I'm back in my Lambda function here. And if you go over to the, beside the code and test, there is a monitor tab. Okay, so there's a button here where it's called, where it says view CloudWatch log. So we're going to click that. It's going to open up in a new tab. And what it's going to do is load a bunch of log streams here. Okay. And what we want to make sure is that we have the latest. You may only have one here, especially if this is your first time, but I've, I've you know, I've tested um, uh, quite a few things here already. Uh, so we want to open this up. And it's going to help give us the error, hopefully, of uh, what we have. So it says exception in handler message. So we pr I printed out the event. Okay, so we have the event. And then, but I got exception in the handler message. So what this means is we go back to our Lambda function, go to the code. And I, I, I know that it is, ah, I know what the problem is. You may not uh, already have this problem, but I was testing some things and uh, I did not revert them. Okay, so I need to say event body here and event body here. And I think instead of json.loads, that may be json.dumps, mm, but we'll see. So go ahead and deploy this. I think that was the original code that you guys should already have that you may not have gotten this error, right? But uh, let's go back to Postman. Let's send this again. And I got the same thing. And this is okay, right? I'm going to go back to my CloudWatch logs. I'm going to refresh. And then, you know, this is my latest call here. So I'm going to choose this. And it says the JSON must be string type. Okay, not dictionary. Okay. So after um, I just kind of was trying to figure out why that didn't work, I what happened is the event body here I already load the body uh, from the event. And then I was trying to do more here. So it should just be message equals event body message event body language. If you already had that, great job for you. I, I don't know what I was doing, but I think these this might work now. So if you deploy the changes, I'm going to go back to Postman again. And we're going to try to send this again. So send. If we get a different error, then you know we'll tackle that. But this is a good thing. It's taking a little bit longer to send the request. Um, hopefully, this comes back and we got an OK. OK, we got finally got a 200 OK. Now, if we go back to the CloudWatch, let's go over. Let's refresh this. You can actually also refresh it here. And we will click this one. And uh, okay, so it says the event, the event body. Okay, great. I had it printing that out. And it says code saved to S3, the bedrock bucket under Tyler YT. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and check our bucket to see if it was saved. Um, let's go back to our S3 service here. Okay, okay. So let's choose our bucket. Um, remember, we had it saved to uh, code dash output. Okay, great. And here is the actual file, right? So it was, uh, remember, we saved it as our minute and second dot py. So if you just click this, then go to download, and then I'm gonna open this up. Uh, actually, I downloaded it twice by accident. Um, so let's open up this first one, but I wanna open with not Xcode. Why would I do that? So text edit. Uh, let me uh, make this bigger so you can see. Okay, so it says here is Python code that reverses a string. And this triple tick mark, right? This means this is the actual code so reverse string, it just, you know, uses the function. It just uses kind of the shorthand to reverse that. Um, and then it also tests it out really quick and defines the steps. 
Okay, awesome. This is what we wanted. We wanted to actually output and generate code for us. Okay, well, we we're able to wrap everything up in an end to end workflow and have AWS Bedrock generate code for us through one of the AI models. And in this case, we used Anthropics Claude version two. If you enjoyed this course, I have more coming. And in the meantime, here are two courses on Autogen. I'll see you next video.